Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Greetings, saints, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Neliswa Shana Chigudu, and welcome to Devotion Time. Let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, thank you, dear Lord, for the beautiful day that you have blessed us with, for inviting us into your presence, sinful as we are, dear Lord, to share with each other about your word. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit may abide in us and we abide in you, dear Lord. I pray, Father God, that you may anoint my lips to speak only that which comes from you. And I pray for the viewers at home that your Holy Spirit be the one who interprets the message according to what you want them to hear. This is my prayer in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Our devotion for today is based on the story of the woman with the issue of blood um, which she had for 12 years. And the title for the devotion is Who Touched Me? Can You Testify? We shall read in the book of Luke chapter 8 verses 43 up until 46. And it reads as follows. And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stenched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? Verse 46, it says, And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Now, really, who touched me? Jesus is asking this question on a path with a lot of people which are pressing towards him. Remember, this was the time when he was being called by Jairus to go and heal his daughter who was upon the sick uh, upon deathbed. Now, there was a lot of people because um, in the previous chapter, we read of how he, he delivered the demonic man. And by the time he, he got to the other side of, of he, he found the people waiting there for him already. But I am thinking, Jesus knew that there was a lot of people which are pressing on towards him. And he, he already knew that there was a particular person who had a testimony amongst them which they needed to hear. So he asked this question in order for them to stop and examine themselves. Evangelist Andrew Ada once mentioned that if God has to repeat himself to you, you better listen because he means business. So in this case, he repeated himself and even elaborated the effect that this touch had on him. So he asked them who touched me because now to get their attention, because now everyone is sort of taken back. How can we be asked who touched me? And now everyone is also denying because they are not sure where is this question going. Who touched me? They didn't even know anymore if they touched him or not. I mean, how can you not know if you touched him? How can you deny when you are walking with him and you are walking next to him? Chances there are a lot of them which had been which had been touching him, but they were not away. So now they were being taken back, and they were they were um, being um, given a chance to examine themselves and to pay attention. These people they denied because none of them had experienced 
anything in their lives. When Jesus said that I, for, I, I, I can tell that virtue has come out of me, they didn't feel anything. Only the woman with the issue of blood who had been healed knew that something had happened to them. And it says that when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down on him. And I'm thinking to myself, how is it that we do not know when we have touched Jesus? This woman had touched Jesus through an active faith. Remember this woman, she was that one who was the untouchable herself. She was that one who had been declared as unclean because her condition, the law was saying that if she, um, any, a bed that she, she sleeps on, even an object, that, an object that she sits on, if anyone touches that, they will be declared unclean. So by virtue of that, she also understood her position that she was untouchable, but now she was touching someone, meaning according to the law, she was defiling that person as well. But because of her active faith, because she believed that this person was not just any ordinary man, he was a person who his, even his garment could make a difference in my life. He, she then went ahead and went and touched him. So Jesus knew that the people needed to hear this testimony. But not only that, even herself, she needed to get a confirmation about her healing. Because her condition had made her in such a way that she was now weak. Even um, the way that we hear that she came trembling because she was scared. She was not sure of herself anymore. Now, I would like to suggest that, in fact, I would like to ask, when we are asked for a testimony, could it be that the reason that we sometimes shy away from testimonies or we don't have a testimony, could it be that we never touch Jesus with, our, with active faith? Could it be that we do not have any testimonies because we are just walking each and every Sabbath, going to church and coming back without having any encounter with Jesus? It is therefore my prayer that when we have been asked to testify, may we next time have something to say because we have finally experienced a transforming grace from Jesus. May we have a testimony because we have finally managed to step up and step out by faith to go and do that which we believe will heal us, that which we believe God can do for our lives. The other thing, as I've already mentioned, Jesus wanted to expose this woman because he knew that in her lied a testimony which would glorify him. Remember, when Jesus is glorified, all men are drawn up to him. So he knew that through this testimony that this woman wanted to disappear with secretly, a lot of people would lose out on hearing who he was. The fact that alone she was touched by a woman who was an untouchable and she was not defiled, instead she made a difference in this woman's life, meant a lot, meant something about who he was. It was a sermon on its own. So he could not let her get away with it because a lot of people were now going to miss out on that testimony. We're now going to miss out on getting to know who he was. When we do not testify at times, we are now, um, we are now denying those people 
who would have gotten to know Jesus through us? Because it is said that to other people, we are that Bible that the other people will never get to read. So when we hold back our testimonies, we are also holding back this knowledge to the people who do not know about him. It says that he looked around to see her who had done this thing. So as I've already said that he knew that it was her who had done this thing. Now, if we remember very well, I said that this woman, um, unfortunately, the law um, was not by her side because now, um, because she was declared unclean, in verse 28, in Leviticus 15, verse 28, I'll read for you. It says, when she is cleansed from her discharge, she must count off seven days, and after that she will be ceremonially clean. On the eighth day, she must take two doves or two young pigeons and bring them to the priest at the entrance of the tent meeting. The priest is to sacrifice one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. In this way, he will make atonement for her before the Lord for the uncleanness of her discharge. So, in this case now, because Jesus was declaring her publicly, she would not need to do this because Jesus was that priest who was there and who was already declaring her as clean. In this way, she was being restored even those um, relationships that she could have lost because of her status. She was now being publicly declared and no one would need to be scared to even come close to her. Remember, I, I once said that even the Jewish men, according to the commentary in Life Application Bible, said it said that the Jewish men did not even want to look as such a person who was declared unclean, lest they find themselves defiled as well. But now here was this woman being declared as, as clean. I'd like to think that over a period of 12 years, there's no way that um, a number of people cannot know of your status. So even those who no more wanted to be close to her could now come close to her. She could now be in peace. Now, when Jesus heals us, he does not just heal. He does not just heal the, the actual disease, but he restores us in totality. Because if we remember in John 10.10, 10, it says that, he says, I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. He wants to restore everything that the devil had stolen, had killed and destroyed from us. So when we come to Jesus, when we touch him with our active faith, that daring faith, which goes against the obstacle that um, life had put on our pathway, we are actually giving ourselves a chance to be restored in full, in totality. Jesus is about restoration of the whole person. It is my prayer, therefore, that we do not deny ourselves these blessings. We do not deny ourselves this restoration because of our lack of faith, because of being scared to go out there and rise above our obstacles and do that which he asks us to do. It is therefore my prayer this very day that God can help us, can convict us on those things which are obstacles on our faith and we can rise above them. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, dear Lord, that you in your mercy and grace, you are offering us your love, your healing, Father God, not just any healing, but a healing in totality, restoration in every area of our lives. Lord, at times we do not have these testimonies because we cocoon ourselves because of fear. When we need to be acting out our faith, we start thinking about the declarations which had been said upon us. 
and end up not acting out of faith as we are supposed to. Meanwhile, we are losing out on our personalized blessings. Lord, it is my prayer again this day that your Holy Spirit can convict us and show us those obstacles in our faith and abide in us, giving us the strength to step up and step out by faith. This is my prayer in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. <music>